can't talk. I know. That's why I showed us what's stupid. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. Today, I'm joined by Eddie Wong. You might know him from Bauhaus, Wong's World. He's got a new book, Double Cup Love, out May 31st. I read it over the weekend, and given what you said about the way the hot pot kind of hits your stomach, yeah. I'm a little worried about you with this show. Yeah, no, I have a tendency to have explosive diarrhea. See, I mean, there's a lot of us with IBS, man. That's a real fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> secret the handshake. The, se the IBS secret handshake is just the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, you ready to get this yeah. started? All right, so first one, Sriracha. You're a food guy. Well, with Wait two. a second, though. Shut I think up. you just made an almost like horrible mistake. No, I'm going hot first. You I'm are? Going, yeah, I'm going. I'm deep diving in the deep end. I'm just gonna get it done. Let's do work. I'm ready. All right, I'm gonna go the other way. So we're going opposite ways. This will be weird. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, yeah. This is no joke. It's just a little nippy. I mean, to go ooh, mega ooh, dead ooh. sauce right off the bat. Come on, fucking open up. Crazy move. You try to get to the the white meat of it. You want the skin. You just did a crazy thing that I think you're gonna regret. Ooh. Ooh, it's hot in here. <laughs> You care a lot about food, obviously, and you've written a lot about love lately. I wonder, do you have any first date turn-ons? Oh, something that would turn you on at a restaurant? Boots, I'm in. Boots, mm. you're in. I'm way into like thigh-high boots. Yeah. What about um, mm. the way she orders food off the menu? Is there anything that oh, could turn you off? No. Ooh. God damn, I'm just gonna keep going because it's alright. <laughs> alright, number two. Yeah, so hot. So hot, you're insane. This is a crazy move. How does the Hooters in Chengdu compare to, say, a Hooters in Daytona Beach, Florida? There's no Hooters in Chengdu. There's not? No, I mean, <clears throat> the girls didn't really have a Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Eddie, going in reverse order. Woo! So there's a Hooters franchise there, right? Yeah, my brother got food poisoning eating a Caesar salad there. Whew. Really? Yeah. How did the how did the places compare? Oh, this is pain. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is no joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you went jumping into the deep end. Cannonball style. I was worried about pooping. Fuck, I'm worried about my life. Do you want my milk? Bro, how much liquid have I drank? Oh. You're gonna tap us out of our milk. I'm out. <coughs> <coughs> Don't do this. This was... Fuck. Oh my god, that was spicy. Oh. Take a break. Oh my god. Can you die from this? You got more napkins? Good god. I don't know what you did to me, dude. Uh, don't put this one on me. This one's on you. Starting at 10. Oh, fuck. How much liquid did I drink? So I haven't had any. You took out at least two glasses of water, plus that much in the pitcher and a glass of milk. Can I go to the bathroom and yeah, come yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do people finish them? Uh, yeah. Like all 10? Yeah. Wow. Oh, dude, that was so painful. I was gonna so say painful. I puked in the sink. I took a giant hot shit, and then I accidentally touched my dick. So now my dick's on fire for the rest of this interview. Don't feel bad. It's something that's happened to me a thousand yeah. times. I always finish the show. I go take a piss because I drink a bunch of water, and then I end up lighting my dick on fire every yeah. single episode. I must have like done something terrible recently, like to deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that about our show? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you are one of our most requested guests, so it would be nice if we could talk to you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. elbow, elbow. Right, cool. cool, there we go, man. <laughs> you ready to move on to number three? I can't eat anymore. You chill. Wait, you man. chill. I'm, I'm, eat I'm, I'm eating. Do you I'm get eating. to number 10 every time? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. No one's ever flamed out that fast in Hot Ones history, <laughs> ever. Number one. <laughs> Not even Khaled. But no, I, I don't think I'm eating any more wings, man. I'm no, a wrap. 
I got a wrap. I can't wait to wash my dick in milk when I get home. <laughs> so Anthony Bourdain basically said that every food show sucks, except for his, yours, and actions. Do you think that you and Bourdain are cut from the same kind of cloth, or what do you think? I think we both genuinely understand that there's a narrative to food besides just what's on the plate and that this is like a starting point for the conversation. I don't think he, uh, I think the thing that, yeah, I'm sorry, it's hard to think with my fucking dick on fire, but like, <laughs> I think the thing that we both do is we are trying to seek the truth, like our own version of the truth or whatever, and um, try to represent it as straightforward and objectively as we can. What do you do for this? Do you just take a glass of milk and fucking pour it on yourself? I don't know, I I'm think I was just- burning up, man. For no, real. You know how during the NFL draft- Actually, I gotta go to the bathroom and come back. Okay, oh, cool. Man. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is dick's on fire. <laughs> Number four now, what do we, what am I at? Pain is good. Louisiana style. You've gone from the internet to network twice. I wonder what are some of the dumb suggestions, comments, the feedback that network execs give you? I'm gonna stand. Um, Go ahead, Eddie. Oof, man. What are some of the dumb questions? You know, I always find it funny when people are like, so how did you come to love hip hop? And I'm just like, it's kind of like, why do you like buffalo wings? Like before today, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory why somebody would like buffalo wings. Do you know right. what I mean? And it's always like, because I'm Chinese, there has to be this like huge origin story about why I like hip hop. You know, like you don't go ask a basketball player like, hey, why do you like basketball? Like you kind of, you're as a kid, you see something you like, you gravitate towards it and then it becomes part of your life, you know? I constantly have to explain that or give some origin story and then they'll look at me like as if my story is, good enough for them and I'm just like well if I listen to what like Taylor Swift then I wouldn't be asked these questions our game's completely out of whack at this point but always got to point out this is actually our hot sauce I'm not okay. gonna have you try okay. it but hot ones you hot sauce I always anymore, call man. out the plug I always call nice, out the plug nice. you know at first we feast we've criticized the way that food is covered now for quite some time and you certainly never hold your tongue when it comes to that situation yeah what do you think is the biggest problem in food media in 2016. I feel like if you have to explain why something's good, it's probably not very good. I wanna eat food and just be like, this tasted good. If someone has to tell me I did this and I did that and I created this foam and then I burned this and put it on top and that's why you should like it, then I probably shouldn't like it. Putting chefs on a pedestal and treating them like food gods, it's kinda hilarious because at the end of the day, like most of our mothers can run circles around these clowns opening restaurants, you know? I mean, everyone gets three meals a day to practice, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I feel like it doesn't take an expert to explain food to me. I'd rather watch some idiot like myself just burn his <laughs> face off and set his dick on fire eating hot wings, you know? You're somebody who puts out work in a bunch of different types of mediums. I yeah. wonder uh, which criticism are you more sensitive to or which criticism do you find more insufferable? Is it the food critic versus the TV critic versus the book critic? The TV ones are funny because I feel like TV critics, at least like with the ABC show Fresh Off the Boat, I was demanding more than the critics were. And it, it's very interesting, I feel, at least in network television, people accept like a certain standard. So that was an interesting realization for me. The worst review I've ever gotten was from Sam Sifton, but I think it was the most important review in my life. It was a zero star review for a restaurant because I was like fucking around. I was throwing all you can drink for loco parties. I mean, it was an insane restaurant. We opened for three months. I remember one of my homegirls was so wasted in the restaurant. She couldn't tell that the door was a sliding door and she drank so much for loco, she ran into the door, shoulder rammed it, and the door fell off in the middle of service. So <clears throat> it was like, you know what? We deserved a zero star review. I needed a wake up call. And he was like, you're a talented kid, but you're fucking around. You're probably a little too successful at an early age. You're not taking this seriously. And that review not only changed the way I approach food, but everything in my life. I'm gonna top five dead or alive from you, but I want you to pick the category. So I got okay. three for you. Either chefs, <clears throat> rappers, or maybe lawyers, because weren't you a lawyer before you started selling <laughs> weed, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's just go rappers, man. I, right. I'm more interested in rappers than chefs. All right, let's do top five dead or alive, Eddie Wong on rappers. Top five dead or alive. All right, you know, when I do top five, I never go with like who I think is actually the best. Who do you think is actually the best? 
big for me overall everything number one and then after him i don't really pay attention to say who i think is the technically best my favorite rapper of all time is cameron i always said his cam he did your song yeah 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 the theme song yeah he did the theme song yeah. Food, woo, good and delicious shanghai moscow check out the pictures LA, New York, MIA, yo, London. The schedule's vicious. i've always known the dipset dudes and i've always been number one cam fan so cam's number one um, number two is probably Jeezy. Like, I just listen to a lot of Jeezy when I, like, cook, when I work. Three, I gotta go Kanye. I Kanye. really do like Kanye a lot. Then I gotta go, I love Future. I'm a big Future head. I like Future. And then, and then five, I'm gonna put Outkast. Because I feel like sometimes cats are too nostalgic and they just put the old names in. Everyone's always like Biggie, Pop, yeah. Jay-Z. Like everybody has the same yeah. exact This is my five. five that I'm banging still. Respect it. All the time. All right, this is the bomb. This is the oh, worst oh, sauce. Oh. Almost. Oh, so that's how you make it to 10. You drop one on the floor. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, uh, New York's New Yorkers for the longest were so anti-LA, right? Yeah. So anti-LA. But I feel like that softened quite a bit. You yourself. I moved, moved out there moved for two there. years, yeah. What's the most Hollywood thing you've done since you've been out there? I mean, like, you, you'll catch me at the Chateau sometimes. There I've been you at go. the Chateau. Oh, I go hiking. Wow. I do the hiking dates. Yo, I did cryotherapy. My boy Aaron took me to cryotherapy where you go in and it's like zero degrees and it reduces the inflammation in your body. I've eaten like vegan food and stuff. So I got onto the LA health wave. You're way on I'm, it. I'm into it, I'm into it. Just like this, you know? I moved straight to Malibu. I got the drop. <laughs> that's, that's just you, Eddie. Started hiking. Yeah, I'm like, if you're gonna go do it, embrace it. I'm gonna look at you now. Look at you now, fam. You this is water? such a... Need some water? <laughs> Let me help you out some water. This is such an interesting <laughs> episode. <laughs> Mad Dog 357. Oof. This used to be our hottest sauce. It's now our second hottest sauce, but you already know that. Yeah. Which, you know, the Mad Dog is what set me off, though. It was hot. The Blair's is kind of tasty. Yeah, the Blair's was tasty. The Mad Dog was just like, pa pa. That was like the 350 hit combo on Street Fighter. <laughs> Which Orlando tourist attraction? do local Orlando people have the most respect for? I mean, yo, I'm a Harry Potter head, so I fucks with Harry Potter. I love the Harry Potter situation at Universal. Which tourist Harry attraction- Potter's up there with Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Which tourist attraction do like people who live in Orlando respect the least? Dude, I feel like our town is just, it's shameless. Like there's nothing that's like off limits, you know? <laughs> I mean, I remember working at like Pirates Dinner Adventure where I had to dress up like a pirate and fucking take photos of people in high school. That was terrible. So it really humbled me. And I feel like even though I'm doing all right, I just remember these days at Pirates Dinner Theater, you know? Oh, oh, see, I threw out half a wing there. Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're gonna put more sauce on it. So it's kind of a tradition around here. We just dab the last one. I'm getting nervous watching. Like, my leg is twitching because I'm like, what if I touch the other side of my dick? <laughs> <laughs> Typically, we take the bite together, but you cruise through this one, so I'll just do this solo dolo, and I'll ask you the question. If you were mayor of New York, what would be your first order of business? What would be the day, day one action? Okay, this is a good one. I really think that the answer is to constantly maintain healthy and equal opportunity for competition in this country. The Republicans are constantly trying to remove competition and create monopolies, create industries that are too big to fail, hoping that then the money trickles down. It doesn't work. But then on the other side, you have to help the smaller businesses absorb this and also help the small mid-sized businesses to retain talent. Businesses that you could open or I could open, they're not available as options. We allow these things to get so big and monopolized that for dudes like us on the ground, I mean, what can you create? We have to maintain competition and we have to help build more opportunities for people to be small business owners. I kind of made it through. You, I think, technically oh. did. Yeah. You take out the champ. And that deserves respect. Eddie, this will be an episode some for Hot Ones on those lore. Do you have, <laughs> before you get out, do you have any advice for other people that are on this show? Number one advice, start from this side. Number two advice, don't touch your dick. 
good, strong advice. It's a fun show. You just can't dumb out like I did. Plug yeah. away. Let the people know what you got going on in your Oh, life. yeah, no. We got Wong's World on the air right now, Thursdays, 10 p.m. on Viceland, and then the book, Double Cup Love, May 31st. And because I made it through, I'm taking some plug, too. Yeah. If you're an athlete, if you're an actor, if you're a musician, if you're some teacher who never thought I'd amount to much growing up, Coach Donner, Mr. Guthrie, I didn't forget. Come on into the Hot One stage, take on some wings, take on some questions. Eddie, thanks Yo, for coming through, bro. Nice to meet you, dude. Mad fun. <laughs>